Hello students, today you're going to use your selected candy wrapper inspiration and start your composition on your paper. Our paper is nine by nine and our little square is one inch. So you're blowing up these things about 900 times. Um, you are going to take your time and really make sure that what you have in your window is what you want to draw. Um, don't make it too hard on yourself. You can either challenge yourself with a really unusual composition or you can keep it simple. Um, you can try more than one. So if you're starting to lay something out and it's too challenging, you can always change. You can keep your square straight, left and right, or you can kind of cantilever it, make it a little tilted like I am here. And I decided to capture that first R letter along with that little E that sneaks over the next E. And then I had to decide how I want to position my paper and my window so I can look at it without getting confused. Do I want to keep them both sort of tilted? Or do I want to um, keep them straight? I decided to put some little pencil lines to mark the halfway point in my little window knowing that my R should come across the halfway point was useful. I'm gonna start over where the beginning of a letter shape, and again, I have to start thinking about these as shapes and not as letters anymore. Where it starts, how close to the edge it is, how close to the top it comes. I'm thinking about how far across the paper it should go. So you have to turn off the part of your brain that sees the word and turn on the part that just sees shape and color. And we are using ghostly, whispery lines for this part. And you'll see why in a minute. I'm gonna erase and redraw, erase and redraw a hundred times. Because even though it's just two letters, it's very challenging. First, I erase and redraw and reposition this E a couple of times to make sure that the amount of space at the top will be accurate. So I'm just drawing where I see the curves are lying and then I'm trying to draw out those shapes and get their appropriate angle and lean and size before anything else. Again, really light pencil and now I'm working with this shape inside of the E, trying to make sure it's the right size, make sure it's going to leave enough yellow, make sure it's going to be in the right spot. And now I'm addressing the fact that these yellow letters have a brown outline and that takes a lot of erasing and zhuzhing and making sure the yellow will be the right shape and then going in and addressing that inner brown boundary as well. Um, and as soon as things get put down one way, I find that I need to erase and fix and clear it up another way so that my brain can start to see what I'm drawing. And this is the tricky spot in my art. I can see in my window that there's some brown overlapping brown. And then I need to readjust my hole to be a slightly different size and shape. And the outline is making it clear that my inner shape is not correct. So I'm so glad that I did this all very lightly so that I can erase and try again. And so as I get going, I go back and I can see where I want to fix and change things. Right now I'm doing the big shape to show the yellow and then that orange inside the R is actually very narrow, very tiny. So if what you get done today is just a lot of tries for laying out your art, that is fantastic. You do not need to begin color today, but you do need to be trying and focused and silent for the beginning of our class to help your brain get everything sorted out inside of your square. It is a challenge even for extremely experienced artists. And so I have seen students become incredibly upset during this process, but then they get a lot of satisfaction when they finish it to their liking.